Hey guys, how's it going? Welcome to another episode of Boxing Fundamentals. This, of course, is episode 7. And I know a lot of people like this video series, so that's why I'm doing it. Now, we're going to be looking at the center line in this episode, especially in how Thomas the Hitman Hearns was able to utilize this. So why is it such a fundamental concept in boxing to protect the center line? Well, first thing we need to talk about what the center line is. The blue line you see in these images, which indicates the central mass or the center of mass of the fighter in question, is the center line. The red line indicates your opponent's line of attack. Now, the center line, the blue one, is always perpendicular to the floor, regardless of the orientation of your upper body. This is a very key concept because... You can move your head, your hands, your body in boxing. You can move those things. But some of those things move at different speeds in relation to your opponent. For example, the heavier or bigger parts of the body, for example, the torso, the hips, the pelvis, you know, your lower body, these don't move at the same speed as you can potentially move your hands or your head. This is why a lot of fighters will basically track the central mass of an opponent. In other words, they track the center line. This is why this is key. Once you understand that different parts of the body have the capability of moving at different speeds, and then you understand that these speeds affect which part of the body you choose as your point of reference or your frame of reference, then you understand that when tracking a moving object, it always makes more sense to track that object or position yourself in relation to that object based on the center of mass. Because if you try and position yourself as a frame of reference using the edges of an object, these will typically be moving faster than the center frame of mass. Same thing applies in boxing. If you try to use the head as a frame of reference, the head can move more quickly than the central mass of an individual. So the center line is basically the understanding of your center mass. And this is why you must protect this. So now we're talking about the different ways you can protect the center line. In all cases, in every single stance you see below, the lead hand is always the first line of defense because it's closest to your opponent. So we're talking about the jab, the hook, different things like that coming off of that lead hand. Now Hopkins is demonstrating to you a stance which is more uh, similar to the classic stance where your lead shoulder acts as a second line of defense. While we have the understanding that your lead hand should be in position to prevent an opponent from just waltzing directly into your space, we need to be conscious of the fact that having the proper footwork or the proper foot positioning to be able to prevent your center line from being exposed in the first place is very crucial. Everything begins feet first, and this is something we must be conscious of. In a typical boxing match between two conventional opponents, one of the ways you can see the center line exposed is off of the jab while changing position. So if you shoot the jab, for example, and you slide over to your left and your opponent doesn't make the correct positional adjustments to contend with this, he can find himself in a position where he squares himself up relative to you and therefore his center line is effectively exposed. That's what you're seeing in this image, except the only difference is the guy in blue who is parrying the jab makes the correct adjustment. Slots keeping his weight over his feet when he jabs. Good right hand from Hearns. Slots keeping his weight over his feet when he jabs. Good right hand from Hearns. So here we see Thomas the Hitman Hearns using his jab while sliding over to his left. In other words, moving to Ray Leonard's right hand side. Now, Leonard bends at the waist to avoid the jabs, but he does not adjust his footwork at the time to contend with the change of position by Thomas the Hitman Hearns, as you can see. So what this is going to do is, when Ray Leonard gets back up, he actually finds himself in a position where he's more squared on to Thomas Hearns, and in, in other words, his center line is completely exposed, and you see how um, Thomas Hearns is able to land that right hand. He thinks to offense. Both of these are great. So, of course, we know that one of the best boxers of all time, Floyd Mayweather Jr., likes to bend at the waist to avoid punches. It's actually one of his main forms of defense. One thing you may notice about Floyd, though, is when he bends at the waist, he often steps in to smother his opponent's offense, sometimes even going as far as to initiate a clinch. And this is one of the ways he prevents his opponents from changing positions on him when he is bending at the waist. Okay, so now we're going to take a look at some of the genius of Thomas the Hitman Hearns. And um, due, to, due to his power, unfortunately, a lot of people forget how good of a boxer Thomas Hearns actually was. This is a fight between himself and Pipino Cuevas. You must realize at this time, Cuevas was the WBA champion, so just to give you some backdrop. And um, this is the fight that Hearns wins in order to get the WBA title, which he attempted to unify against Ray Leonard. Now, it's key to understand... 
um, Pipino Cuevas had defended this title something like 10 or 11 times and stopped most of those fights by knockout. So this is no bomb. You know, this is Pipino, the king of the welterweights, Cuevas. So uh, just to give you the backdrop there, so let's go on and take a look at the film study. So here we see Thomas has flicked the jab. You're going to see him do so a second time, and then Cuevas is going to look to respond with a jab of his own, and he gets countered. You see Thomas has slipped to the outside and then countered with the right uppercut underneath the jab of Pipino Cuevas. Great technique. Now, please pay attention to the trailing foot of Thomas the Hitman Hearns. You will see him adjust his position, which is going to result in Pipino Cuevas actually squaring himself up relative to the new position of Thomas Hearns. So pay attention to this trailing foot as he changes the angle. So there you see the change of the angle, the change of position. You notice now that Hearns is going to land this right hand. And Cuevas, if you notice after the right hand has been landed, look at his feet. Pepino Cuevas has effectively squared himself up. As we said earlier in the video, if you're able to cause your opponent to square themselves up, you will always expose their center line because that's just what happens. Okay, so that's what we see in this example. still beat this guy. Look at the considerable hand speed of Floyd Mayweather. I mean, the kid is just an extraordinary fighter. So in this quick section between Mayweather and Miguel Cotto, you see how Floyd is using that jab, stepping over to the left, as most conventional boxers do. Now, the main thing to focus on is how Cotto actually adjusts his foot positioning at all times to keep himself in a position where he can always protect that center line. Now you're going to see Cotto coming with the jab of his own you see Floyd step back. Now, if you've watched Floyd for long enough, you've probably realized that he steps back in a straight line to create distance from his opponent. You see him do this when people attempt to establish lead foot dominance on him, and also he does this to protect his center line as well. I must say that this, of course, is traditionally frowned upon, but Floyd Mayweather has the foot speed to get away with this, so that's why he does that. Now you watch the jab to the body like a syringe, just steal some of that air from his opponent. Now, he, as he misses this right hand here, because you notice that Miguel Cotto pivots and steps to his left. Cotto is actually outside Floyd's right shoulder and Floyd's center line is basically exposed in this point. So a positional adjustment must be made by Floyd Mayweather to protect his center line. So what is he going to do? Well, there you see him not only protect himself by pivoting, taking that step pivot to the side to protect that center line, but notice how he bends down before he does so. So, I mean, the man just has a full understanding of what he has to do at all times. He's in against a guy defending his title for the 12th time, and he looks to be walking right behind him. He's in against a guy defending his title for the 12th time, and he looks to be walking right behind him. As you pay attention to this, you see Hearns fades away from this left hook. Pipino Cuevas, very front foot heavy there. Um, Hearns is going to take a step pivot to the left. Now look what happens after this pivot. After Hearns actually pivots to his left, you notice that Cuevas has both of his feet squared up yet again. And we know what this means, of course. This means that Cuevas must make a positional adjustment or else his center line is going to remain exposed. There has to be an adjustment now in terms of the footwork of Pipino Cuevas. Uh-oh. There's a jab, there's a straight right hand. He, he, he maintains his feet in a squared up position. So he doesn't make the adjustment in time. Watch this again. Fades away from the left hook. Cuevas very front foot heavy there, leaning over his front foot. Thomas Hearns steps over to the left. Look at his feet squared up. Doesn't make the adjustment in time. And of course, Thomas Hearns will always make you pay. As always, I hope you enjoyed the video. I have recently created a Facebook page actually, so you guys can now go ahead and uh, make suggestions, comment, and just get involved in my new Facebook page, link in the description. And of course, it's unboxing education as always. And um, yeah, you guys might see me upload videos exclusively to this Facebook page, so it's more reason why you should go over there and like that page immediately. Thank you very much. Have a good one, and I'll see you in the next one. Cherry Danish in the bed cloth. I'm a real horse. I'm the real force. Behind this nigga, y'all consider the G. Action with the last time.